How are you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. How you been? Uh, I mean, could be better, to be honest. I, I, I don't know what's going on this season. Um, yeah, getting a bit uh, mental stuck, I think. But other than that, I'm, yeah. I'm fine, yeah. I mean, as long as you're fine outside of the game, it's easy yeah. to fix the in-game stuff, right? Like, yeah. I mean, you outside know... Outside of the game, it's always harder. Yeah, exactly. Do you have any idea why you feel stuck in-game? Um, I, f I feel like I'm too overwhelmed with like all the stuff going on. I feel like I, no matter what I do, like my impact feels... I don't know, I feel like I just stopped like playing the game. I feel like I just, uh, what's the word? I, I don't even know. I forgot how to play the game, basically. Like sometimes at least. And then it's just like a, mm -hmm. a mental asylum, basically. It's like really hard to get out. And like no, no matter what I do, I just feel like, you know, I have no impact. Yeah. I mean, your champion is going to make you feel like that some games, yeah. right? But shouldn't be like that. Always. Yes, exactly. Mm -mm. Okay. All right. So yeah, just like the other times, I'll record this for you so you have a video yep. of it. By the way, uh, are you planning on opening up a a own uh, ice cream factory? Because I always <laughs> see the the nice ice cream. It looks really uh, yeah. tasty. Yeah, I mean. That my ice cream is low-key really good. Um, maybe in the future, maybe when I retire, I will do something like that. Nice. But right now I don't have time. But it's like actually really insane, my ice cream. Yeah, it, it really looks good. I kind of get jealous every time I, I see it on, on the Twitter timeline popping off. It's really easy. You just need to buy like ice cream machine and then it just does everything. It's It's so crazy. Do you have like your own recipes or is it like from, from internet? I have something? like uh, an ice cream recipe book. Oh, that I just that's follow. cool. So yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, at the start you mentioned that you feel lost, right? And stuff like that. But um, the thing is, right? Like I've obviously coached you quite a while now, right? So yes, I understand it's... you quite well as a person and your play style. And it's like... Like, we've been through this before, right? How it's unacceptable to have games like this, right? Yes. On your own trick. Yes. And that these games adds up. And here it seems like you were maybe bot lane, or was it Vayne bot? It was Vayne bot lane. I play against you mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's like, it's complete open game, right? And I'm sure your teammates completely inted, right? But you also did some mistakes this game, right? You have to off them. Yeah. And... Those mistakes still matter because even though this game was lost, you're gonna do that exact same mistake in a winnable game. Yeah. Um and then here, right? You go zero fourteen, completely speed run the game, right? Yeah, I mean that was I just uh, that was on stream as well. I just didn't really mm -hmm. care. Okay. Here you went Crown of Vegar. I would never go Crown of Vegar. Um they have said, right? Yeah. He like sure, you might think, oh yeah, crown, right? Crown good. There's a said. Then I have Jace, will poke your crown always, right? Lux can easily splash damage your crown, right? We seen lands a Q on you or jumps on you, easy you, whatever. Now your crown is popped, you will get one shot. Like Everfrost is just better. Like, uh, like, when like ults always you, better or? Yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. Okay. Like if said ults you, you can always Everfrost behind you, right? And he will get stunned guaranteed. Oh, it's yeah, much that better. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, like crown is... Uh, just too easy to pop. Like, when Crown was released, it felt stronger than now because it's one of those things people need to get used to playing against. Yeah. When it was released, people would just jump on you perma, and then, yeah, I mean, then it was fucking broken, right? Yeah. But it's one of those things that now that it's been released for quite some time, people are used to playing versus it, so it never has its real value anymore. Um, Like, I played a game of uh, Crown yesterday on Misfortune for fun, uh, and I thought it would be good in the game, you know? Yeah. But enemy Draven kept ulting me. Just to pop it. So I never had it up. Yeah, I actually saw you know it I mean? on, on Twitter yesterday. Yeah. The tank MF build. Yeah. So it's like, even though I had full all in, 
their one poke champ, Raven, used his ultimate ability to pop it every single fight. So it had no value yeah. whatsoever. Um, and that's not something I can like avoid. I can't just be in Fog of War entire game as ADC because maybe enemy Draven will ult me, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't buy that. Um, but yeah, I mean, my main question before we start is just that, like you said, you feel helpless and stuff, right? Like before, and but <clears throat> a lot of these issues you do know about, but you haven't fixed them. Yes. And I'm just like wondering, like, why is that? that that's a good question. I, I legit don't know. I, I feel like... I can focus, but I just I just tilt so hard when like th something is out of my control. I feel like I just can't let go, and it kind of just affects, you know, how I play. Yes, and I mean, it will. You need like you must have a lot of mental strength to play this game. Yeah. Because no matter what you do, there will be things happening that's out of your control. So like, let's say I'm playing a scaling champ. Then the things that will be out of my control will usually happen in early game, where my champion, regardless of my skill, just cannot really, you know, do much early. And like, let's say my jungler gets invaded at blue buff all three and dies, right? It's like, I couldn't do much to yeah. that. And that can feel bad, it's out of my control. Now, let's say I play something like this. Whereas here, it's the complete opposite i can impact early game but here the issue will be that let's say i do snowball early now my teammates that i snowball they int now i don't really scale good right i'm tank rise i'm not gonna own in any game right mm. so now i lose so basically my point is that no matter what you do when you're playing this game there's always four other people on your team things will happen that you can't control there's nothing you can do. You can't change your champion because there will always be this problem. You can't do anything. And you have to accept that. If you cannot accept that, you will always have this problem. And that's easier said than done, but you really have to work on that because, like, you're at ELO right now, where it's, it's not that you're dog shit. Like, you're not stuck in master because you're dog shit. So many people are stuck in master because they're dog shit. Like, they're, they're just terrible at the game. I'm seeing games where you're complete 1v9, you have insane farm, which is like really fucking good. And you're doing the right thing. But then you have just like these sprees where you're completely useless. Completely griefing the game. Yeah. Very often when you very often it tends to be when you're top lane as well as well. Here you're top lane. Here you're top lane. Right? Yeah, but the thing is I I, I, I usually accumulate support. Top lane. But I get like filled support even even if I accumulate top lane, I literally get top lane all the time. Top. Yes. But you're griefing I, every game on top. Yeah, but you I just can't just top. like dodge every game I get top lane. Because then I just get... Well, even with this win rate, you should. And just play on a smurf. Yeah, You but... can't play top, dude. You clearly can't. You know? Yeah. Like, that's just the reality. Like, look at your... Like, here you play top. Nice. Here it went good. Here you're top. Like, what's happening in your top games? It's just like if you're if you're not gonna dodge if you're not gonna dodge top I would rather review and coach you top lane Kale than mid because you are griefing so many games on top lane Kale. Yes, I agree. I feel like I play way better mid lane. Yes. So it's like let's say I get mid fifty percent of my games and the other ones I am either support <clears throat> let's say twenty percent and thirty top you know something like that. Yeah. If if all of these is like. 25% chance of me losing, that's terrible for my climb. Even if your mid lane is like 70% win rate, you will have negative win rate because, you know, you're top lane, right? Yeah. I had this same issue in Season 6, and that was one of the reasons why I stopped being like complete one trick. Like, the other reason was I wanted to do coaching. Um, but one of the other reasons was I couldn't get past like low challenger because some games was just like completely unplayable. You know, like mm -hmm. forcing myself to play Vega mid every game. And it's like, your Kale top lane, it's extremely hard to play some games, but also it's completely different from what you know. So you really need to learn top lane. Like here you did really well, right? So yeah, the, if the, I'm the, you, the reason like, I uh, did well this game was because the guy was autofill, did like three supports. And I feel like this yeah. is the only time I actually can win. I feel like 
even if it's like an, an even 1v1, I'll just get Dorf level 3 under tower. And like whoever's jungler's first top lane, like kind of wins the lane. I feel like yeah. we just have no impact then. Yes. I mean, Kale will not contest the first three so there will be three ways on your turret and you will get Dorf. Yeah. That will happen. That's why I don't want to play top lane. Yes. But yet you're forcing yourself to play it. Yeah. I'm gonna count your top lane games. So here you won. Here you won. Here you were top lane, right? Um, yes. Yes, you lost, but didn't do like terrible. But you lost. Here you lost. Here you lost. Here you won. Nice. Here you won, but it seems like you didn't do good, right? I don't know fully, right? The score doesn't tell fun. the whole picture. Yeah. Yeah, you completely run it down. Here it seems to be top again, or maybe it was... Uh, so yeah, top. I played top you're... versus um, Zeri. Yeah, didn't go so well. Didn't go so well here. Here you are 15-1 and one with Pentakill somehow versus Irelia as Kale. <laughs> so that yeah, sounds like also a gap. Kale main. No, I actually just solo bullet this guy like three times. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh. Alright, interesting. And... Let's see. Seems like that's it for top lane. Mm, here, you have another one. Right? Like, <laughs> it's not going so great, right? Yeah. Like, here you won again, but didn't do so well. Here you somehow got caught a kill and neither percent kill participation with Ignite versus Renekton. Somehow you won this. That's unreal, by the way. <laughs> like, that it's should never happen. It's always against um, these autofield players. Yes. So, like, here again we lose. Like,. I don't know. Like, you, at least, f if you're not going to dodge top games, then at least your homework should be, like, when, like, you mentioned, right, versus auto field players you win, right? Yeah. So, watch the games you win and see, like, what is it that I'm doing in those games that makes me win? Like, what do they allow me to do that lets me win the game? Like, is it simply that they are so bad that you get to farm? Yes, I mean, okay. they, they, yeah, exactly. They don't they don't contest anything. They give me, like, free traits. They don't respect my damage. Right. It's like they have no idea so, what Kale does. But then then you just have the false idea of the matchup then, right? Because you shouldn't even be allowed to do yeah, that exactly. versus other fields. So it's important then when you then go into the real game, how do you... Like, if, if you're able to play versus the shit players and realize that what you're getting away with is illegal, right? Yeah. Then how come when you go versus a real human and you can see that they're being a human because the way they're posturing, right? Their body language in lane, right? Yeah. But you still do the mistake of like dying and walking up. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because it's like, it's not that you don't know, right? Like, let's say in this game, right? Like Camille walks up, right? With her passive and W and shit. You know, you can't fight her. The difference is if she's autofill, she probably doesn't walk up, right? Yeah. So then you need to understand that for me to get this minion, I need her to be bad. You see that she's bad, so now you go for the minion. But if you see that she's good by the way she's moving, then why the fuck do you walk up, right? Did you stream any of your top games? Uh, Yes, I think they're all streamed. Okay, I will find one. Yeah. Because I think yesterday when you're at this... some games... When you're at this level of um, like gameplay, it's really important to make you the best overall as a player. Yeah. You know, not just your mid lane because you're gonna be playing top lane a lot. Yeah. So here you are against Aurelia. No, I was actually playing Aurelia against Kale. It was another Kale OTP. I had like oh. four different Kale OTPs <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, they're taking over the server or what? Yeah, for some reason. Are they all in low masters? So here you're 7 and 1, right? So, uh, as top lane. I want to watch this. Just quickly. Just want to quickly watch this. Yeah, this is the Pentacle game. Yes. Like he I walks up level like... 1, he, he, he fights me without his fully stacked passive and it's like free. Yeah. Yeah, like, he has to int. That's the only way you win, Yeah. right? So I want to show you what I mean, because we can easily tell in-game that he's going to int. Just by some simple clicks he's doing in-lane. Yeah. Okay. So you enter lane. 
Nice, David Sonek. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so enter lane. All right. You have uh, TP, she has TP. You try to pull the wave because you understand your matchup is dog shit. You meet her in the bush. Now you're cancer tilted. And then you're confused. Why the fuck doesn't she run me down? <laughs> yeah, because I thought what? you did just start red. Yes. Yes. So, th this is what I do as well. But the issue is that level one, if I know I'm going to do this, I always enter lane. Yeah. So that if I meet her, I meet her over here at the start of the game and I can just recall. Because this is exactly why I never like pull away without knowing that she's leeching. Because of this exact thing. You know? Yeah. Um. So yeah, like that, that's like one small thing. Because like here for sure, you should already lose your flash. If she just fucking runs you down. Like even if she just skills E here and stuns you, you're, you have to flash. Um, but yeah, anyways. Now your wave is at least fine. And you know that Zed is puffing up to top. And now we should expect ourselves to get dove, right? Exactly. Eventually. So let's see when you go for minion. So she's posturing like this and she's all leaning you here. Yeah. Right now. I have a pop potion already. Now you did. Okay, good. And she has conquer, right? Yes. Yeah. If she has lethal tempo, you never win this. Yeah, exactly. No I know the two, obviously. Yes. So? What do we learn from this? She has conquer, we win. Right? Yeah. She's standing here. We win. A good player would have had lethal tempo and solo kill you there. Make sense? Yes. Yes. So it's like, that's why you win these games. And that you can know before you even fight her. I want to just quickly see a game where you int as top lane. Because I think it's because you're going to try to play similar and then get punished because they're actually good. You know? Or they have the right setup and stuff like that. Okay, here you seem to be top lane. Okay, let's, let's see what's happening. So... The fuck is their draft? <laughs> yeah, I was also confused. <laughs> oh, I know this guy, Intern. I know him. He plays Ivor in every role. Yeah. For some reason, they also managed to win bot lane. Yeah. So, Jonas Ignite. That's already something to keep in mind. Yeah. You started D Blade, so you chose you're gonna fist fight him. Yes. Don't agree with that decision. But that's what you chose. I think you're already, you know, losing because he has Ignite. So I think that's... Yeah, exactly. Easy. That's why I was also tilted. Because I know that in, in top lane, playing against Yoni with Ignite is, like, legit not winnable. So maybe D-Shield would have been a bit better. Yeah. I mean, it is winnable by the sense that you go even or try to lose 10 CS, you yeah. know? But I feel like, like you... once he has his Berserkers, he has way bigger power spike than I do. Well, of course, of course, I mean, you're Kale, yeah. right? So it's like, with that logic, like, when I see shit like this, if you're gonna go this, then you should go fucking Ignite Exhaust, you know? Yeah. Like, you should fucking fight him then. Like, here, you're, like, going TP, and then you're going D-Blade. And then he has Ignite, so now you lose. You know what I mean? Yeah. So if you really, if, if, like, if you think like this, that, oh, I'm in a matchup where when he gets Berserkers, he's stronger. When he gets Shield Bow... He's stronger. When he gets shield bow IE, he's stronger. If he's stronger every single item spike, and you will never outscale him, then you might as well just fucking burger flip it then. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I, I go ignite against him in mid lane, but I feel like in top lane... Yeah, I, in top I never know if he... Burger like... flip to go ignite on Kale, right? Yeah. So, like, so far, everything here is normal. Everything here is good. Just hugging EXP. He's not pushing into you, so... Only thing that realistically should go bad now is that you might get Dove eventually. But they don't have a good uh, dive duo. They have Yon Kindred. Very easy to flash Yon CC. They don't have, like, insane one-shot burst or CC, so... Nice. Good Q. So let's just see. Like, where does the int happen? Like, here you yeah. take a lot of damage yeah. prior to wave crashing, so that's already int. Remember, you only have one potion, you don't have D-Shield or Second Wind or even W right now to, like, help you. 
So I want you to just watch this, right? Just watch and ask yourself, what the fuck are you doing? So this minion dies. So now you walk up. Makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. Is there any minion dying now? No. So I should just back off. Yeah, that's... So then tell up. me, what the fuck are you doing now? Watch. What is this? Yeah, I, I actually don't know. I think it's just the... That's what, what I mean. My, my brain just turns off for a second. I don't know why. But I don't think... It's because you're Bane. I think you're legit trying to do something. I think you want him to crash faster or something. There's no way your brain is like legit like uh, disconnected there. Because you're not that bad. No, I think noticed. I changed the song. I played another playlist. That's why. Yes, like here you're doing something. I don't know. Yeah. But you're clicking forward. <clears throat> you're clicking on him. <clears throat> it's as if you get like bored. And you want to like Q auto E I just or something. Wanted, I think I just wanted to E him there for some reason. But that's useless. Yes, I know. I mean, doesn't now seeing this, less. I know. But like in this game, I... Let's uh... say he's auto filled and he doesn't go on you, right? Yeah. And you E him. That's like 70 insta damage, right? Yeah. He will life steal and health regen. So it's not actually 70. It's more like 30. Yeah. This 30 HP is not worth risking you losing 200. Prior to the wave crashing... Meaning that that can assist them into diving you. You know? Yeah. The only reason to ever do stuff like this is if the minions are reversed. And you'd like want him to deal damage to you and stuff. To maybe try to make yeah, the wave push back to you. Yeah. But here the wave state is good. You should just be telling yourself my champ is fucking dog shit. But at least I can catch these two waves under my turret. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because you're getting XP, you're playing good, but then you just do this. I would pop potion. Use your flash early. And you, yeah, I mean, you shouldn't fight the Yon. You should drag them over here to turret. Mm -hmm. See this? There, and just walk up and fight Kindred. I think that's ten times better. Because if Kindred starts hitting you now, she starts taking aggro. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then if this guy cues you, and you're here, you can easily flush it, right? Yeah. Like, Makes either sense. way. I want to see something. But yeah, I mean, the, the biggest mistake is getting chunked beforehand. Like... Sometimes you'll be in matchups where if you know you're getting dove and they have like a long cooldown they need to use, like Yoni, to trade with you, it can be worth to like take like a bad trade to make them use it, but he doesn't need E to dive you. Yeah. He just always will stack you on these minions and then just fight you. Yeah. So it's I, not like that was a good reason either. I think the plan why I went left side is because I knew that Cannon would give me three and I wanted to get my, my W. Okay. But, uh, well, yeah. they will always take the turret aggro, right? Yeah, before, so that, was, that would make cool. sense if you could last hit it. Yeah, I mean, you know? it got uh, tower shot first, and I thought it would get one more. Yeah, okay. Well, it's good you have a reason, at least. But yeah, I mean, like, literally, if you didn't lose that HP, you know? Yeah, it would have been the If HP you literally ended. start this, yeah, then it would have been at least, like, a one-for-one one trade. Which wouldn't be like terrible. It's still worth for them, but it's like fine, you know. It's like yeah. all we can ask for, right? As Kale. But yeah, I mean, this is like what I mean. Like when we're playing Kale top, this is what will happen. I would never buy boots, by the way. Yeah, like, I should have bought like that so there, right? Anything, like, dude. Do you know how much HP refillable potion is? Uh, 250, I think. Yeah, 250. Do you know how much HP Ruby Crystal is? Uh, 400. No. No. 100. Was it 150? Yes. How much gold does refillable cost? Yeah, 150. And Ruby is 400. Right. Oh, well, yeah, that actually makes sense. Why the fuck would I not buy refillable potion? You will never get one shotted in early game. I agree? Yeah. So this is 250 HP flat, basically. This is the best item you can buy on a champion like yours. There's no fucking way you're teeping back here 
with boots or dagger, no potions. Yeah, I just realized that's actually so bad. Right? Yon is coming back into lane with fucking longsword refillable, 250 extra HP and AD. You're coming back with boots or dagger. That is not the right mindset. You have to buy refillable potion. It's 250 HP. Right? Okay. It's two ruby crystals, 800 gold. You are never one-shotted. Right? You should never buy ruby crystal over a refillable potion in early game. Yeah. Yon will E on you. He will auto Q, auto Q. You will be half HP. You pop refillable and W, you're full HP. You have dagger, you fucking open. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I mean, now the game is awkward because ideally we didn't lose flash, right? Uh, this is really good though. You cancel him. Um, here it's really hard for me to tell you what to do because I, yeah. I don't know the map, right? I don't yeah. know if Kinder showed. Like, let's say she, uh, she, she went to, to mid to bot. Yeah, like your Krugs, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, like, here your best bet is just to keep slow pushing until your jungle is topside and then look for, like, a push out, uh, ask for help, you know? Like, yeah. now you see Kindred crossing into bot side, so then you can try to crash, like, next wave, potentially. Um, you're also looking at jungle, which is really good. You're being really aware here. Yeah. But if I'm Kindred, I know you have no flash, so I will get here anyways. Like, Kindred hovered into topside here. If yeah. I'm her... I would uh, comes you. again. That's... Yes. So like I'd say like the only other thing you could do different is that when you TP back you see your ward timer. Yeah. When you get your ward, you can leave to ward. Right now. That's also what I do now. I think. Yeah. If you run down now and ward, that could be good. Actually I didn't. Yeah, you don't, which is just bad. Like he dies at least, which is nice, right? Yeah. yeah he's least in common. Yes. I don't know what close proximity Lee is. If he's right next to you, fighting can make sense. If he's not right next to you, Lee yeah, he's, he's, he's next hitting to me. the wave. Yeah, I know. He, he was pinging, and I knew he would save me. Yeah. He just ward jumps to the fucking thing. <laughs> so now, now let's see what the fuck happens. Like, I mean, you refuse to buy potions, which is just terrible. There's no world that this dagger yeah, buys. I realized. HP. And that's regardless of matchups. Like, even if you're against a fucking bot, I would go with fucking HP. Because I would want to freeze versus the bot, right? Yeah. And when I freeze, I will lose HP. So what happens here? So this shenanigans happens in bot lane, and then you come up to top. You can't freeze. Wave is too big. You try, though. You don't yeah, have potions. Yeah, no potions. So, yep. Luckily, he went through. His... Oh, never mind. Yeah, he I actually didn't. thought he would stop it as well. But yeah. I think he wanted to now, buy his Berserkers. Like, yeah, but look your HP now. Yeah. If he eats you here and full combos you, you are either dead or 20 HP. You know? Yeah. Like, so I would not have frost that wave. It's just too big, you know? If you have, like, lifesteal items or something, I think it's, like, fine. But you don't have any sustain. So I just want to watch this until you, like, start inting to, like, see what happens. Like, now your wave is awkward again, right? And enemy jungle could be here. Not plus that's on my top. You die. Well, you lose your ulti at least because you're writing in chat. Like, that's literally the reason why. You know? Yeah. Like, watch. I want to show you something. So, look what your team does here. Watch. They kill Kindred. Yeah. Right? Okay. Okay. So what this means, your teammates, they need to push out on base, right? Yes. So Kindred always has tempo now. Okay? This is just how the game works. Like, she unironically gets tempo from dying. Same with Gnosis. Your Katarina and Lee Sin has been chasing enemy team now for a whole fucking minute. Killing them. And I think we can both agree, you're very happy right now that your teammates are killing enemy team. Right? Yeah. So you need to use that positivity when this is happening to you. Because now... Wave is slow pushing into enemy, and Kindred is top side, because she has tempo because she died. Yes. So you're forced to lose something. That's just how the game works, right? When you're playing versus good players that can understand this concept and punish these things, Kindred looks top lane, she realizes your wave is bad, you have no flash, they want to gank you, right? So when you see this, oh fuck, I'm losing minions, oh, I'm so triggered right now, right? I'm so tilted. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You have to tell yourself that Prior to this, the reason why this is happening is because your teammates got a lot of kills. 
but you seem so triggered. Look, watch your facial expression. And look your the way you're pinging. And now watch. Watch when you, watch now when you get ganked. Do you agree? You seem a bit triggered? Yeah, I don't know what I'm saying there, but um I mean you okay, I will predict you're like what the fuck, Gnosis is top here, man. Yeah, so you I... say something like that. Let's see. <laughs> I'll tell you what you say. I also thought I could sidestep it, but Gnosis literally just withered me the second. I guess Gnosis is here. <laughs> you said. <laughs> so, like, the thing is, right? You didn't die, which is good. Yeah. But the issue is, look this wave. You would want to farm this wave. And your teammates are surely going to come topside now, right? Yeah. Not lose. Your teammates are good, by the way. Your teammates are good. Because they understood that right after you kill bot, they need to help you top. Nautilus is running top right now. Your mindset now should be, I'm fine losing these minions. Because when Nautilus comes top, I will get more than this. You know? Yeah. So if you now take a fight, regardless of outcome, it will be bad. Because if you die, it's terrible. If what happens now happens, it's still bad. It's not terrible. The reason why it's still bad is because now when your team enters top, they have a 10 HP Kale with no ult. And now most of the time, you will not be able to walk up and farm these minions. Yeah, you makes know? sense. Because Kindred can still run top. Don't you think it is better if you just stood here and now you start walking up and we do a team fight top 3v3 or something like that with Kale ulti and everything? Yeah, Surely that that's better. Way more right? sense, yeah. If Jonas ult up, and you have ult up, I think that 3-3 is much better for you guys than for them. Like, that's what I think. Like, I think you can turn it around. And I think for you, that's going to be really good, because then you will get wave. You know? Yeah. And maybe kills. So now you lose wave. These type of mistakes are so important, because it's not that you'll ever die here. I don't believe you'll ever die here. You always have ulti, you know that. I think it's just a terrible trade. I see a lot of people do the same thing on Trindamere. Where they're like, oh yeah, I have ulti, I'll never die here. So I'll just walk up and int, and then they lose their ulti and they need to recall. And enemy top gets a free base. But on top of him getting a free base, you also lose a wave. So you go down gold and EXP, and he gets a free cheater. And now you don't have ulti for when you return to lane. Yeah. So now when a situation happens where your teammate goes for a play bot, and Kinder decides to stick around top, and you need your ulti, so in like 80 seconds, you don't have it. So this we need to fix. You basically just tell yourself your teammates just did a montage bot lane. So now enemy will make a play top. You know? Unless you see them bot or something, right? Yeah. So whatever you need to give up, you should do it because you guys got more in bot. You know? The minions you're losing here. Enemy bot lane lost twice as much most likely. Plus you guys got kills. You know what I mean? Mm. So if they want to be funny and stand here, then it's fine. Don't lose your fucking ulti like this. Because your ulti is the only reason why you wouldn't int. Right? It's what's meant to keep you alive. Yeah. From going like 0-10 every game on this champ. And yeah, I wouldn't stand still writing like this. Because you should be expecting them to come, you know? Yeah, I mean, like I this Nasus, not chat, but I don't know. Yeah, this Nasus could easily have been Kindred. Or Nasus and Kindred could easily have been here together. Walking at you. Yeah, like, now you will see it. Like, look, your fucking ult cooldown. Yeah. Like, there's no way this will be anything, like, playable. Like, this fight, we should have ulti, for example. But we don't, you know? You're just walking in and dying. And now you are triggered. Yeah, I guess I thought Katarina could do something there with everything up. But Lee Sin is dead. So why are we even fighting? Yeah. Makes sense. I mean, I, I can't see the map, right? But all I can see is that uh, Zoe is unstoppable and is here in the fight. So their strongest member is here. Yeah, that was... I think it was just still decision. I yes, mean, it makes sense. you're just emotional. Yeah. So, like, so far, like, watching you play top lane, you don't seem to adapt that well to situations. So you play every situation and match up the same. Like, 
do your being slow push and you walk up and you want to eat the yon. Right? Yeah. So then you lose like 200, 300 HP and then you just get dope for no reason. You are being slow pushed like away from, like where you're slow pushing into enemy team and you realize they're gonna gank you. Then you decide to stand still so you're actually gankable instead of just, you know, being at your turret waiting for Nautilus that's literally mm -hmm. pinging that is coming and writing in chat that is coming, right? And then you lose your ulti and you probably felt like that was fine in game, but it's not fine because it's such a long cooldown and you lost a wave because you based, right? Yeah. And that hurt you. You were actually like ahead somehow, you know? Like the game was like, and ironically, like not that bad here. I feel like at least like when, when you killed the Yon to that Lee Sin gank, right? When you guys killed Yon Kinud, to me, the game was in a good fucking state. On top of that, your bot lane was winning, you know? All you need to do was just be in a good mental state there. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you do anything that like helps you stay calm in game. Like for example, for me, like if I'm listening to like piano music and have everyone muted, it helps me a lot. Yeah, uh, I feel like I when you. I'm already tilted and I listen to piano music, it just tilts me more because it's like so depressing. Uh -huh. But yeah, sure. like muting all and just like not even looking at the like at my teammates is like I think the thing that helps most. And deep breaths, yeah. of course. But we, we need to look at our teammates somewhat, right? Because yeah. like if you didn't look at your teammates, you wouldn't even recognize that Nautilus was running top there. Yeah. And Nautilus was the whole thing we were meant to play around there. You were simply meant to lose minions until Nautilus came. And if Nautilus came, and then you walk up and they all in you, then you guys should get like triple kill. Yeah. You know? Um, I think you losing your ulti when Nautilus is in your lane, it's fine. But as he's walking, it's complete giga troll. Because then Nautilus might as well have just fucking ran bot lane. Yeah, right? I can agree. Like if I was that Nautilus, yes, if I was Nautilus, I would have been so fucking tilted. If I ping that I'm coming, and I write that I'm coming, and when I'm at tier 2, my Kale goes and ints and loses her ult and bases, like, I, I could have rambled and dove Ivern, you know? Yeah. So those mistakes, they matter so fucking much. Even though, score-wise, it didn't matter. Nobody died. But it prevented enemy team from maybe dying free people, right? Or it gave you on an extra wave over you. Like, that's, like, the worst best case for them, you know? Yeah. Like, the worst best case for them is one wave differential between Kale and Yon. The best case for them is they kill you and then Nautilus enters topside and can't do anything. So, yeah. Stuff like that needs to be worked on. And, I mean, similar mindset should be for mid lane. Like, you shouldn't walk up and int in mid and lose your ulti 10 seconds before your teammates are coming, right? It, it's the same idea. Yeah. Um, we can go into the uh, mid vault now. I just really wanted to see this because this was kind of like what I was expecting, you know? Like just some emotional int and failing to adapt to top lane role. Like top lane role is so punishable, you know? From both sides. Like in mid lane, it's like, oh, I got forced to base, right? Uh, it's not that bad, right? I can enter lane again. But for bot lane and top lane, if you get forced to base, you're always losing a lot more than in mid lane. Just because of the distance you need to travel both to recall and to come back on the map. You know yeah. what I mean? I feel like I also have issues with um, like jungle pathing. I, I feel like my, my tracking is pretty okay, but I feel like I, I don't know like all the, the jungle pathings, like the best paths. I feel like... As I, in I for like specific champions or pathings overall? Um, I mean, I mean, obviously like you know, classic pathing, but for example, like Diana, like sometimes I, I see Diana players like full path and sometimes I see them like do like some three camps and I don't really know how to like adapt to these things. And I feel like I just fuck up my, my wards then as well. Yeah. I mean, obviously like the thing is, right? Like there's no hard rule for every jungler. Like Hecarim yeah. can full clear, get level four and gank, right? Skill his E at level four. But he can so easily do free camps and skill E and gank. It all just depends. Is it worth to hurt yourself in order to help your team as a jungler, right? And that yep. just depends on how volatile the lanes are. If mid lane matchup is crazy volatile and a complete banger, then I will skill my E, level 3, a Sekarim. I will fucking gank it, right? If I do blue grump this as Diana or Hecarim, and I see mid lane is half HP, no potions, both sides. I'm gonna come and fucking gank. You know what I mean? Mm. So it's like, when it comes to jungle tracking, 
you need to use the information of where your jungle is, what the enemy champion is capable of doing, and if it's likely. Right? So like you're playing Kale, so you already have this like aura around you that everyone wants to hurt you because everyone has in their mind that you're gonna completely one nine the game later, right? Yeah. So already that's a reason. I don't know what you're playing against here, this game. Um Vukon? Is it Tiger the Tiger? No I thought it is, but no. I, I think it was Camille mid lane. Okay. Yeah. Right, so Camille has good gang setup, right? Yeah. The thing is I already started with two kills and I still managed to just Fuck it up completely, and I also again bought boots. Yes, this is so fucking useless <laughs> when you don't have like actual sustain. Yeah, but yeah, like, um, Camille is like an AD version of LeBlanc. Her gank setup is really fucking good. Her laning one v one is terrible. Okay. Yeah. So like, I would be afraid to play aggressive and push versus Camille because she can just point and click the wall and gank me. Yeah. I have no flash right now. So already I feel like I will get ganked. So it's not so much about Diana's puffing, because, I mean, in reality, every jungler can kind of do what they want, right? Like, yes, you can expect a champion like Sin Sao and J4 to gank more and farm less than a champion like Diana or Hekka, right? Yeah. It's safe to assume. Just because these champions use items better, if they get more gold and resources, they can carry more. They really want their ultimate ability, right? But that doesn't mean they can't gank you. Like yeah. I said, Hecarim can skill f uh, E on level 3 instead of 2 points Q, and he can gank you. So if you are here versus Hecarim Camille, they will gank you, and they can gank you. You're against LeBlanc with a fucking, uh, I don't know, Warwick or some shit. Like, they can gank you, like, why not? Right? You're Kale with no flash. Yeah. If I'm you this game, I'm telling myself, nice, good fucking start of the game. Somehow I hacked the game and got two kills, <laughs> but I have no flash. Versus Camille Dana. So I'm a free kill if I push. So my mindset would be to just only last it, you know, play safe, not die to gank. Um, you have map cover on, which fucking blows um, for coaching. Yeah. But um, let's see. So it seems like you're bot lane leashed because they're missing mana. Yeah, she was buffing um, on the top side. Yeah. So, yeah. Seems so. Seems like both junglers are puffing top. So what we could assume with this is that Diana has a couple of options. First option, first option is that uh, she just takes full clear bot side and ganks you a little free buff red buff. Okay, this will be around like 240-ish. All right. Her, she, I mean, again, she could do something like this where she does free camps and ganks you on the top side. This is just like extremely subhuman to do. We cannot expect. I that. had that yesterday with Elise and. Yes. Yeah. You no, know, but that's different though, because Lee Sin only wants to do like free camps. Like Lee Sin could do like this, like Red Raptors Grom, for example. Yeah, that's exactly what he did, and then he walked yes. around, and I was. Yes, but that that's like normal because okay. he went topside to do one camp here. It's not normal to full clear your bot side and then loop around like this. Yeah, that's what I thought. So I was like watching the replay, and I saw I took Grom. I, I didn't even know you get like level three off. Um, yeah, okay, so crux. you don't know that stuff. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, but that that's like, you know, you get level 3, you do this free. You also get level 3 if you do this, this, and this. So what a lot of junglers will do, champs that just want to level 3 gank, they will often do red raptors grump and then just gank. You know? Because they don't need blue buff or wolves or anything. They just want to re start respawning their camps, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like, what do they do afterwards? If they take like these three camps and then like gank mid lane? We like go back to top and take like well blue. that depends on the map again right like if bot lane is a complete banger they can just cross mid and just gank bot okay but there's like a general like thing for no there's no okay. general thing okay. because they could just gank mid into do bot crab and bot gank or they could gank mid into return here do this or they could just go gank top again like yeah. champions that's gonna do that they tend to just run around and perma gank if i'm new this game i'm expecting to either get ganked at level four or level 3 after her full clear here. Anything else I think is complete like subhuman. Okay. Like if she does 3 and then ganks you here at like 250. I think that's unpredictable. You know? Okay. Yeah. So it's either she's going to gank you around 240 from bot side. Or around 310 to 20 from top side. You know? You haven't warded. Which is terrible. Like you warded during the fight. 
Um, so like here, when you did this, right, you should already tell yourself that uh, you're going to have to like respect, right? Yeah. You get a pink, which is nice, but you can't ward because you will lose minions. So yeah, let's see how you adapt. Lane right now, seems fine. So right now, 2.30, so she is about to start her Raptors. So she should be on Raptors right now. If you check the game replay, you will probably see her on Raptors. So now she's finishing Raptors. And she's moving into Wolves, or she could gank you. I think that if you are standing here now, and you know, you're know you pushing and fighting, and Camille has E, you would easily get ganked by Dina. But right now, with where you are, she should just be going to Wolves. I think right here, because of the champion and the matchup and your lead, here is a timer where I would just like hit the wave and fight her. So watch, this is what I mean. Like look your lead, right? You started the game with EXP lead and gold lead, right? Look your items, especially if you bought like real items instead of boots, right? Yeah. Um, boots has a bit more value versus stuff like Syndra. Um, but again, I would of course prioritize your fillable potion over boots. Because again, even if I dodge, let's say, 200 damage from Syndra somehow, right? Somehow 25 movement speed lets me dodge this. I would still heal more. With yeah, global. exactly. Um, but yeah, here I think that you should be fighting the wave and trimming the wave. Because I don't think that if Camille jumps on you or fights you here with level 2, I don't think she will do anything to you. And there's no world Diana ever kills you here. Yeah. Right? So like this is like champion specific and like different game to game, right? Like I would never tell you to walk up and start hitting this minion if you're now against Syndra or Zoe or Anivia or anything like this, you know? Yeah. Because you just get half HP for no reason. But versus a Camille that is now level 2 because she lost EXP early, you should for sure hit minions and try to hold this wave state. You know? Like, I don't even think that you should be e here. Like, I think you should be standing here. But you're doing something stream-related. Muting your mic, it seems. Yeah. And it's, like, stuff like this, right? Like, it's so fucking bad for the lane, because this crap will get contested, most likely. You know? Yeah. Because they're both and... half topside, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, your job... It's not to move here. You cannot do that. It's like impossible for your champion. Your job is just to create a lane state where Lee Sin has the option to gank mid. And if Camille does go to crab, she loses wave. If you let her crash this wave, she loses nothing for moving. And Lee Sin cannot gank. Make sense? Yeah, it does. I, I actually never thought about this. But it it's like, it's... Yeah, it's like so obvious. But yes. I, I don't know how I've never thought about this. So, like, now, when you do E, you can't fucking trade with her. Like, what I want is that you don't do anything, and you just stand here, and you hit minions. And you try to hold this wave state. If she walks into you to fight you, you just fucking auto E, auto Q, right? Yeah. And you will fist her. She's level 2 Camille, so she either has QW, WE, or QE. Any type of combination of this, you should win the trade. If she ever dashes into this wave, you should hard win. Most likely she will have something like this and just kite away, but you will still win. Yeah. And even if you lose the trade by, let's say, 20 to 40 HP, if that keeps her in lane for another 30 seconds, that's good. You know? Yeah. Instead, you are running away, muting your mic. Um, so, like, sure, we could maybe say that you weren't focused here, right? But even here, you are not doing what I'm saying. Because now you run away, forcing yourself to have to E for minion. When you now should be standing on top of these minions, not letting her just hit. Say you should fight there. Have you played with Camille before? Uh, in top lane, yes. In mid lane, like, once, I think. Yeah. So it's like, it's really important, right, that top lane is much different. Because if you're standing here as Kale and you're this side of the map, right? Yeah. And Camille all ends you here. She will run you down. Yeah, exactly. If you are here as Kale versus Camille, she cannot do anything, right? This is the yeah. same thing. She can't run you down here. So you always are able to fight. Because yeah, you're just running away. Now you're not accessing the wave. You're also losing a bit of gold. And you're forced to use 
and spells. Now she's gonna get all three, so now you don't have the level advantage. I still think you will win, but just sucks to not have that level advantage. And now Lee Sin cannot gank, because Camille will get the crash away. Here you see, by the way, this trade is really not that bad. Agree? Yeah. So now Lee Sin is pinging to gank, but the window is like so little now, you know? Yeah, because I let the wave crash as well. Yes. But if you're actually fighting and contesting, I think this would have been good. Now Diana and Lee Sin will meet topside and Camille can fog and now you're pissing your pants and the game is a complete burger flip. <laughs> and we're all hoping that Lee Sin doesn't int. And like I said, wave crashed, so now Camille loses nothing doing these shenanigans. What I want is that at least if she does this shit, she's losing a wave. Now you decide to hard push, so that's fine when you see that she commits. Um, personally, I would have based here. Because uh, contesting this bounce with 120 mana does absolutely nothing. So yeah. like here, I would recall. Right now, after this ward, I would just base. I think rotating is fine. You have the time to do it. Never ever should you return to lane here. Because you are never crashing this wave. You have 117 mana. You are also not able to stop Camille from crashing her own bounce. Because again, your mana. So if you base, you come back with full mana. And uh, maybe a dagger and refillable, which is also not bad, because again, 250 extra HP and dagger is nice on top of full mana, right? Mm. And then we will be like in front of your turret and you'll be fine. Even now, basing is still fine. But you decide to stay. So now good luck. I actually think I still recall, but I was like way too... I, I realized it way too late, but yeah. Yes, oh, I mean, no, the, the issue with... <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, at least you buy one potion. But yeah, I mean, the, the issue with uh, delaying is that you lose more, you know? Yeah. Like, the only thing we could ever argue here is that by recalling, you do lose one or two melees always because of like the bounce. Yeah. Um, the only times you don't lose minions when recalling on a bounce is if it's like an extremely hard bounce. What I mean by a hard bounce is let's say you crash two waves and the waves are like here and this wave is like standing here. Then yeah. and you recall, you don't lose anything because the wave is bouncing into you like so hard. Um, but when it's like this and it's more of like a soft bounce, you will lose one or two melees. So what staying will do is it will give you those one to two melees of gold or EXP. Very rarely will you get the gold because laner comes back to lane strong, right? Mm. Um, so usually it's just EXP. I simply think that it is more worth to make sure I have the mana to sustain myself and farm later than to secure those two extra creeps. Um, I think here, if you did have the mana, I think staying is acceptable because of the matchup. I think you can greed for those two minions of EXP because I don't think your base is like crazy item wise, you know? Dagger and refillable. It's not like you're gonna simply beat Camille because of that. I think the mana is what's more important. Don't you agree? Yeah. Like, spamming Q for farm and spamming W for heal. Yeah, exactly. I think that is what's gonna make you win, not the dagger. So, yeah. I mean, that's something to keep in mind that when you do cheater like this, you will lose these minions. So if you, let's say, you recall like this two times in a game, you will lose like four to five um, uh, melees usually. Um, and that for sure adds up. Like that's not like little amount of gold. That is 100 gold and a bit of EXP. Um, so that's for sure something that sucks losing. But when I'm in this position where I'm down 250 HP, a bit of attack speed, and more importantly, almost 400 mana, I would base always. Okay. Because now the same problem that you're so late into lane, you're not even contesting, you're not able to do anything, you're not able to ward, you're not able to do shit. And now you're back into lane. So you even almost lost a cannon because of how late you based. Um, so I would have slow pushed this. Let's see why you don't. Did Diana, like, does Diana not have items here? Like, is she basing or what's happening? Like, if Diana has no items here, then she has to base, so then your hard pushing makes sense. But if Diana has based, then I think this is greedy, simply because if Camille just pulls the wave now, what do you do? Watch. Nothing, yeah. So, 
because I don't think you can force this wave in by yourself unless you know Diana can't be here. And I don't know if we can have that. Now you just dab Diana. <laughs> someone redeemed the <laughs> dab with like channel points. That's why. <laughs> it's not even a real dab. What do you call this a dab? No, but I was too lazy. I was already four losers in. And it's, you can't I call be it lazy when they dab. use their fucking channel points, man. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's the what cheapest. What is this app? <laughs> it's the cheapest. Okay, that's true. Okay, it's fine. But yeah, like here, like if she has only her smite item, right? Then it's safe to assume that she's gonna base because at 440, if she still hasn't based, she has like 1.2k gold right now. Yeah. You know. So, but I don't know because you're not pressing tab, you're not clicking. Uh, I would have checked out if I was you, because the way I see it is that if she's basing now, I can hard crash and brute force this wave into turret one v one. But if she can gank me, I don't want to do that because I can't brute force it if she can gank me. So now we have this issue that now you have to walk up far for minions and she didn't even pull the wave properly. Look away, Sate. Watch. Yeah. I want her to pull the wave up. Yeah, she could just freeze So us. that you're really fucked. Yes. Yeah. So what I want is that here you recognize is Diana basing after this? If yes, you can hard crash the wave because Janna is in lane right now. Right now she's in lane. And Diana is facing. So you cannot get ganked, you're 1v1. One 1v1, one. One one, I think that you can brute force crash the wave. You're against Camille, I don't think she has Ignite. Maybe she does, but I don't think she's like that strong. Um, now, if you are vulnerable, then you should slow push. So watch now. If now you're like fucked, no matter what, then slow push. Right? So like, let's say now, Diana can gank you here, and Janna can gank you here. Or 1v1, one one, you can't brute force the wave in. Because maybe you're against a rally or something, right? Mm. Then just slow push here. So I think this I think this hard push is extremely greedy because we don't know if Diana is base. Now Janna is fogging in river. If I was the Camille, I will always freeze here and you are really fucked, by the way. Because you can't walk up. Nothing stops Janna from killing you here. Right? When you enter lane. Watch this cannon. Watch now. Watch now. Now you want the cannon, right? Yeah. Look. Yeah, hey, cannon. Woo. Now you got the cannon. Now Janna is in lane. But watch here. Did Janna have to run bot? Look, Janna. Not really, no. She could just walk mid lane. Yeah. And this is the stuff I mean. This is why I'm telling you that, like, yeah, yeah, nice. You're 2 0 here, right? But yeah. look your fucking games. 2 6, 0 4 0. These type of games. The games you're hinting is, is because you get this type of mistake, they get punished. You know? Yeah. Like, I refuse to believe that all of these games that you're doing bad in, it's because you're dying 1v1 perma. It has to be that you die to random support gang sometimes. Yes, like, that's my biggest issue. Like, support and, and jungle. Yes. But it's because shit like this, this wave state, should never be like this. It should either be 1 here, Hard bouncing into you because you fucking brute force crashed the wave. Or two, it should be here right now, slow pushing into enemy, and you should be asking for help to get cover or look for some kind of way to get to crash the wave, you know? Slow push till you get six and then maybe brute force crash with your ulti, something like that, you know? Mm. Because like this, you can't play the fucking game. You're the most free kill I've ever seen right now. Camille just ease onto the wall and they will kill you every time here. Diana. Wukong, Janna, anyone that chooses to move from their lane. I would be careful about hitting her here. Like, look her wave state right now. To me right now, yeah. it is more worth to force the lane into this spot than to actually deal damage. Yeah, makes sense. And if I hit her, the minions uh, hit yes. me and then it yes. will push to her. Yeah. The only time I would try to trade now is if my damage will do so much that I can break my freeze to then actually like dive her. So like let's say you do like this, right? If your champion can do that, then I think this is good because then you can just turn this freeze into slow push into dive. But when it's simply just this, right? Like we talked about this, 70 insta damage does not mean 70 damage. It means more like 30, 40. Because by next time you hit her, right? She's healed up a bit, right? So. 
Now you took a lot of minion aggro, and it's pushing into you slower. And now it's pushing into her. Yeah. If I'm Camilla, I would gladly take that damage, right? So, I think here, you should be happy that wave is slowly bouncing into you. Because once she now does this and kills these minions, who has cast her lead? He has. Yes. So here, if I'm you, I would rather not hit her and have the wave be perma here, than to hit her and push it back to her. This is again a massive mistake, because this now makes Lee Sin's gank harder, it makes Camille's game easier, and it makes your game harder, because, like, this trade was good. Because watch the minion aggro you take here, watch. Right now, the wave is already pushing into you really hard. See now? Now you take a little bit of mini aggro, but it's not that bad. See? You leave. And it's still fine. It's still pushing into you. Yeah. But this helped her a little bit, but it's still fine. But you can't do this again now. Then you walk fully into her wave. So now you tank for so long. See that? Yeah, and then I just... Now it's wave. fucked. Yeah. So this mistake will hurt you, because now... Wave will again end up like this, where now she could, if she wanted to, right? She could pull the wave. You are Oom, um, so you can't do shit if she does it, right? When you're pushing this out, why can't Diana gank you? Why can't Shanna gank you? They could if they wanted to. You didn't do any of this on purpose, right? There's no fucking way that you told yourself, Oh, I am gonna hit her now and break my own freeze because I see Janna bots. I refuse to believe that no, that's no, what you're thinking. Yeah, that was not the case. You just hit her because you wanted to do some funny damage on her. Yeah. But right now it's much better for you to keep the lane frozen and not base. Because that would let you get 10 CS per minute and Camille be perma gankable. And you are not gankable. Does that make sense? Yes. So you can hit her a little bit like this. But understand that every time you hit her, you do break your freeze a little. Here it's freezing so hard for you that you can afford to do it. But you can't keep doing it. So you can do one trade and then not this. Make sense? It does. I think this fucked your game quite hard, honestly, because yes, you got Berserker Greaves, but you are not playing a champion where getting a spike like this means that now you're gonna go and kill everyone on the map. So the problem is... The wave should be here and she should never get to crash it, not farm a single minion for free and you're farming for free every minion. To now you are in base. And she could have pushed on base if she wants or roam like this or whatever, like that's up to her, right? You choose to freeze, which is good. But I would have rather farmed safely. Because you had dagger and boots. Compared to berserkers, it's not that insane spike, right? Because it's not the same as getting berserkers from zero gold. You already have a dagger and boots. You know what I mean? Yeah. Only mistake I'd say here is that when you're freezing, I would trim it because I want to contest her on uh, this wave coming from base. So not this one, because she won't be here for this one. But, the but next one. this one. Yes. Mm. So when you keep all of these alive, your waves die so quickly. See this? So like, now she enters the lane and your entire wave is dead. So you don't have time or space or room to actually harass her. You know what I mean? Yeah. You can't ever pull this wave um, back up into the lane because you will take so much damage and your minis die so fast that by the time you have the choice to pull this wave, your minis are only like here from base. Understand? Yes. So instead, when you come to lane, just I would drop vision. Like, you could drop a pink top side, for example, since that's where you see Diana. Just so you can make sure that you know if she's rotating to mid. Because you're not going to lose any minions right now. If you go to ward, you can just secure this cannon, right? And you don't lose anything. So, okay, I take this cannon. The reason why I don't want a pink bot side is because Camille would just take it. Make sense? It does. So, yeah, I think if you walk here, you drop pink here and you just freeze. You remove, like, these three casters. Then they will only have free casters more than you, because we will die. You will be really chilling, I think. Camille doesn't have good wave clear either. Like, you know, it's not like you're playing versus Syndra that will just one shot the freeze. 
Camille has similar issues to Kale when it comes to wave clear. Especially in mid. Because, like, at least Camille in top can build, like, a big slow push herself and crash that way. Yeah, in mid lane, in mid, it doesn't she can't. really work. Yeah. Yeah. Because now you see, like, oh, shit, she just enters lane and she has, like, so many fucking minions. And, like, you'd end up fighting her, which is not bad. My problem is just it's just worse than having it trimmed and then fighting her. You know what I mean? Yeah. Good. It was like, here, literally, this now, you lose wave. Yeah, and if I trim it before, I could just... Yes. Uh... If you trim it before, these minions aren't fucking dead. Yeah, and then it freezes. Yes. That's way better. Yeah, it makes sense. Now you lost minions dealing this damage. So now I'm going to tell you, like, now this isn't even good. You know? Like, because she loses nothing, basing. Yeah. She doesn't mind basing here. So, like, now you just lost gold to force her to base. When she already could base because the wave crash. So, yeah, I mean, if you just, like, kept the fucking freeze, that would have been better. But you didn't trim, so that was impossible. So now she also has tempo over you. You lost gold and she has tempo. Meaning that if she wanted to, she could have now one-shotted this wave here. Just auto Q, just Q, W, just roam. and roam. Yes. But there wasn't really, like, nice. a objective We're, fro we're throwing roam. gang signs. What the fuck? Do you have gang signs redeemed, too? People can redeem gang signs? No, I, this? that's the Kale squad. <laughs> Kale, Kale squad? Yeah, it's it's a K. It's supposed to be a K. I'm doing it. <laughs> I see it. I see it. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. I'm doing it right now. Nice. Welcome to the squad, too. Yes, I'm Kale, Kale Gamer. <laughs> I fucking love Kale Bat Chest. Me too, Bat Chest. Let's go. By the way, do you think I, I saw you um you tweeted like a few days ago about Gargoyle Stone play Cassiopeia? Also, do I think it's good on Kale? Yeah, because I tried it and it, it actually it, it doesn't feel bad. It actually feels quite good. Well, I think it's piss broken item first of all. Yeah. Second of all, the issue I can see on Kale with it is that you don't build HP. Except so the shield yeah, isn't as Maker. massive. That's why I yes, thought like maybe demonic embrace or like you know Rylai's sometimes a thing you you build. Well, you need Nashers, yeah, and you need Riftmaker, yeah. You need Rabadons, right? Like for damage. Surely Rabadons is more worse than Rylai's. Yes. No. So you need those three items. Uh. So then at that point you could buy demonic, but at that point most of the time you would need void stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, that that's, So um... it's like when do I buy it? You know what I mean? Like Cassiopeia, for example, right? You go Everfrost or Leandris. Yeah, she so gets then only Mi HP items. Yeah. Yeah, so Mythic mm. is HP, Leandris is not. Um, but then you get Rylice, which is HP. Right? Yeah. Um, so you get always Rylice, and sometimes even Everfrost. So you're gonna get more HP. Um sometimes like yeah. Like, Demonic on her is not bad either. So, uh, not so sure. Um, for sure, it can be something. Because Kale is one of those champs that when you do have four items, you are dealing so much damage, right? Yeah. But I wouldn't prioritize it as hard as on Casio. Like, Casio, I legit buy that item. Like, third item sometimes, you know? Yeah. I would never do that on Kale. On Kale, it would be, like, last type of item. Okay. Can so you like, maybe can they you have, use, like... Uh, uh, can you use it while being CC'd? Do you know that? remember. Like, I always use it, like, muscle memory, you know? So I, yeah. I don't think about when I'm using it. Because I thought, I cause sometimes it. when I'm, like, you know, like, um, CC chain, CC, and I can't get my ult off, it would be, like, kind of yeah. smart. But, okay. Yeah, I mean... i to try it then. Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, you can just try buying it, and then you will see, right? Yeah. You will be CC, then you can just check the fucking replay. Yeah. Um, But for sure, like, last item, you can for sure buy tank on Kale. So I'd say if they have, like mixed type of damage when they're diving in so like diana yasu for example right yeah. or akali yon so stuff like that then i think our girls could be good um, okay. you know, it needs a little bit of practice to time it though because without utilizing the shield it's not that great of an item yeah um but the shield is for sure huge wow your listen's good wow he's good yeah you played it really well. look He's smurfing, watch now. Yeah, he flashes in. I was... Yes? I've... I rarely see this. So there's one Herald. We get the turret with Herald, I assume. Let's see. 
Okay, so we get Pentakill by Nana, so that's obviously bad, so let's see what happened there. Yeah, I want to go Looks for like the whole Looks wants to, yeah, Lee Sin wants to extend the play for no reason. Yeah. Um, and I committed, I, mean the, I should have just pecked off there. Yes. The only thing I would tell myself here if I'm you is just spamming Lee Sin and we just take the wave and back off. But yeah, I mean, obviously his kick is bad, right? Like, yeah. if he kicks the Camille like a human being, then this play is not that bad, I think. Exactly. So, um... Yeah, I mean, I think this is fine to go for. I think it's hindsight to say that it's bad, because if Lee Sin is a human and kicks... Like, obviously, the best play overall is your base right now. Right? Yeah. That's the standard play. But then can we literally ease onto you? Right? Yeah. I think it is fine to look for this quick play. Because she should always die here. This is fucking crazy illegal. Lee Sin literally just fails his kick. Look. He fails his fucking ward. Yeah. Right? If he wards here and kicks here, it's this free kill. Because you just use yes. E. Yeah. And Diana will never come from here. Impossible. So, and it is impossible because she's dead. It's just mathematically impossible for Diana to come from there. Yeah. So, what I would tell myself is if I'm new here, my default mindset is to base after this wave because I am Um, so I need to recall. Right? Yeah. If a funny quick play happens, I will join it as long as it's on my way to base, right? So, like, it's on our side of the map. I refuse to run into their jungle here at this moment because Diana's coming. So that's why I think this is a fine play because he should always kick the Camille over here. Now, when this happens, I would stop following. This is fucking crazy, right? This is fucking banana. Yeah, also, unlucky she gets an E range there. I don't sure, know how she but me what there. are you even trying to do once you see this happen? Yeah, nothing, I just walk they... away, right? Yeah, yes. Diana has to come. We knew that already, 30 yeah. seconds ago. So that's fucking bad, obviously. They get a lot of plates. You take it back. Now we have Nasher's Tooth, so I would just look to base again. You do that, so that's perfect. Then you decide to go top, because your top lane decided to open top lane. So that's chill. Um... So the question is just like how strong is Wukong, you know, like you're looking locked camera, like you didn't even know his HP and mana till now. That's pretty bad. I would go Krugs. Yeah. But then you face check them and die. That's not why I would love when Krugs. I would want Krugs to want to fi yeah, farm same. them. Yeah, no, I actually want to do Krugs and then they just appeared because they didn't even ping. But you see them. <laughs> yeah, right there. Yes, and you're still clicking forward. Why? Because I... Why would Jenna ever go there alone? Yeah, right. it makes sense. I kind of got baited like, by that. Janna knows if you are not here on Wukong's screen, then you're here. Yeah. So if she knows you're here, why would she walk up 1v1, right? Then it's always going to come from here or from here now. Another thing is you need to realize your turbo will be exciting yourself. So like here, when they, again, this is the same thing we talked about in the top lane game. But now it's the enemy team doing it. So, in your game, your teammates killed enemy team. In this game, your teammates died. So mm. now, enemy has full control. When you go top lane, here, and they have full control, yeah. you need to see where they cross. Because one side will be weak side here. If they cross bot, bot is weak side. If they cross top, top is weak side. So you need to pay attention to this. This is not a moment to read chat and complain about the game. This is a moment where you need to look at the map state. You see now, Lee Sin dies, right? Fucking sucks, he's griefing. Unlucky, right? That sucks. Now, I think going bot, I mean mid, is better than top. Because this top wave don't exist, it's dead before you come. So there will be one wave in top, there's one wave in mid. By going mid, you aren't weak side. What, but what does Uga do then? Just like... he's, he, he can go fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> right like <laughs> what like yeah i can't farm top if i'm weak side right so it's better i get mid wave no yeah well he actually and also guys... path top side there for a second and i guess since he saw me walk top lane but, but you can't farm top <laughs> yeah like, makes look, sense if you can wanted to right now he could soul dive you to force your ult and run away I agree? Yep. If Wukong is a good player, he walks up, he auto queues, full combos you, he runs away here. Now you're half HP and ulti. Right? Yep. And you're standing here. 
What stops them from diving you? Yeah, nothing. Nothing. So the reason why you're going ahead in your mind is that Urgot gets mid wave and you get top wave. Yep. And you're both happy. And I agree, that is normally good. The issue is you cannot do that when they have full map control. Because it will never be one wave here and one wave here. Somebody has to lose something, right? Your team will not die for free, right? Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yes. So what you achieve by running mid here is that you guarantee that you don't lose anything top. You will personally get away, but by being two people mid, you guys can most likely retake control. Wukong is top now. If you and Urgot are two people mid, right? And now Jinx is coming mid, because she's recalling. Renata's coming mid. You guys can retake control of your jungle. I agree? There yes. is no fucking way this Diana can full clear your jungle if you go mid one shot this wave and you walk in with Urgot, Renata, and you with Kaelult after they kill Lee Sin. Do you understand? Yes, but I never really thought about it, so it's like kind of... So like, yeah. here, you need to retake control of the map because otherwise you guys will lose too much. You need to run mid because your teammates lost the mid fight. So if you go top, you will always get dove. Only time you run top here is if you cannot get dove. Because then we have the situation where you get one wave here, Ergus gets one wave here, and it's a good trade. But it's delusional to think that you should get away with this. Obviously you ended up dying because you walked in, but I think you're fucked here regardless. I think if now... If now you run away, so you take this, right? If now you run away, so here you leave. Yeah. You cannot enter here. I agree? Yes. They will take Krogs and dive, right? So now the issue is, Urgot died because he tried to retake. We could have said that, yeah, he shouldn't do that. Sure, he shouldn't walk in alone, I agree. But then we still lost our full top side, which is, again, bad. Camille now has mid push, so now they have mid push and top push. I think that if you went mid... You would have lost the top wave, but you would have gotten the mid wave. You would have gotten push in mid. And you guys could retake your control. You guys could place vision. We could place wards. Renata could walk in and ward. <clears throat> and we would have control over the game. You know what I mean? Mm. But now I think it's impossible to control. It's impossible for anyone to play the video game. Because let's say these guys weren't where they are now. Let's say they were just in fog. Can your team push mid and walk up? No. Nope. No. And because your team can't push mid and walk up and create vision, you can't walk up here either. So, you need to learn how to retake and when to do it. Here, you simply run mid. If enemy team kills your team and they're like too low or their champion simply can't dive you, right? Like let's say instead of Diana, it's some fucking useless champion, right? Or maybe Diana is dead here, right? And it's only Janna Camille. Then maybe you could enter topside, right? So you just need to understand it's greedy to enter topside. Because I think regardless what happens here, it will be bad. Wukong could have solo dove, you force your ult, then you get dove. They could have just pushed you away and you don't get the wave anyways. So, yeah. Next item is Rishmaker, right? Yes. So, what happens here? Urgot is dead. He's in this here. I don't know where your team is. I assume they're in your bot jungle because map cover isn't showing them yeah, here. Yeah, so they're all there. I assume they're over there. Yeah. So then it makes a bit more sense to fight. Um, only thing I would say is I would run to my teammate's side of the fight. Here. Because if Camille goes on Lee in here, I can still hit her from here. But by being here, I can still ult here and hit people here. That makes sense. Yeah. When you're here, you're locking yourself into one one here. But it's the same range as standing here. Right? Mm. When Lee Sin is where he is. The only way he gets all in by Camille is if Camille goes top of him. So you should put yourself in a position where you are close to both fights. When your teammates are coming from this angle, there will always be two fights. There will be one fight here and one fight here. So you should try to find a position where you can hit both. I had this same issue not too long ago. Um, like Right now I'm playing ADC and practicing ADC. And played a game of Jinx where kind of similar thing happened. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, it was versus a scripting Zion, which is always nice. Yeah, I don't Have know. You... This is still in the I game. Don't... Yeah, it's, it's kind of chill now. Yeah. 
He's like drifting around the entire fucking map, <laughs> one shotting me with uh, full of health, uh, unflashable sign ulti. It's really nice, I think. Um, it's kind of long ago. Not sure. I mean, it was for sure a loss. Tell you this that one much. three and nine. No. Don't think so. Oh, yeah, it was. I also played against us like two weeks ago. Okay, so here is this fight. <laughs> All right. So watch now. So there's this fight, right? Yeah. And I'm hitting here. This is fine. But now I go here and I start walking he here. Watch, watch. I walk over here. Yeah. But if I just stand here. I force the S reel into me, and then there's only one fight. When I start hitting this, then there's one fight here, one more fight here. Yeah, and, uh, and I can't join both. Maybe team kills them. Yeah. Yes. So I just need to now click forwards. So like here, I'm over the wall, which is fine. Like I couldn't do anything else about that, right? That's just my puffing. Yeah. Now instead of clicking here, flanking, I should just click here and join this fight. Because if I walk here, then there's one fight here, one fight here, and it's just worse for the game. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, this happens and I'm starting like looping around all the time and it's like really cringe. And then we lose. Um, so yeah, like you can just recognize this by recognizing your teammates puffing. You can realize that if I force a fight here, that's just worse because then I make my teammates have to rotate for longer. And they might even get caught trying to be here rotating to this fight, right? Mm -hmm. So I should force myself into enemy team. You have, I mean into your team. You have an easier time rotating to your team than your team has to rotate to you. Because your team has to rotate through fog. You know there's nobody here. You know there's nobody here. So you walking here allows your team to connect easier. Make sense? It just makes sense, yeah. If this is a 1v1, right? If enemy team stops right here, then of course you just fucking hit the Camille where you are right now. But this is building up to be a team fight. Both teams are contesting each other. So now my problem is you can't ult this Renata, for example. Like maybe that guy in a different game is a Jarvan engaging there, right? And you're not able to ulti. Because mm. I'm sure that you didn't think about this option. So if this Renata is Jarvan going in here, I am sure you would stand the same way you are right now. Because you're thinking, how do I get this grump? How do I hit the fucking Camille? Yeah. But you could do both of these things standing here. So after blue trinkets, somehow you're 10 HP here and lost your ulti. So, okay, I mean the ulti is because of the fight, but you enter lane and she just solo dives you, right? Yeah. I mean, you don't need to walk up here. This is just trolled by you. Right, like, why Why are we doing this? Yeah, because I wanted to see where she is, but it makes no sense. But, but we know where I she don't is. need it, yeah. This info doesn't do anything. Right? And better to ward instead of killing yourself, right? Yeah. Right now your options is only one option. And that is you drop a ward here, and you walk here, and you take the wave when it comes. And that's it. That's, that's the only thing you do. Yeah. <clears throat> even if you want, you could even freeze. It wouldn't even be a bad timer to freeze, because the enemy team is in base. Camille would need to base too. You know? Like, they need to recall. But like this, now you're fucked. See, now you guys lose two waves in mid. Because now Jinx left mid to go farm both wave. Look now. So you lost your flash and now you're 10 HP. I need you to stop making this type of silly mistakes. Because this fucks you so much harder than you think it does. Because now, all of this time now, you don't have flash, for example. Yeah. In all of these fights, everything that's happening, you don't have flash. And that's terrible, right? It's not good. Your champ is insane with flash up, no? You can bait Diana engage and flash her ulti every single time, right? Yeah. And then you can outplay the entire fight. I've talked to you before about how my issue with Kale is that her range isn't that big and she has no uh, gap closer, so she gets really kited and outranged by good players. Flash counters that. Mm. You don't have it. I went peeing. Yeah, I mean, That's why I yeah. had to. Yeah, I mean, the, the game is over at this yeah. point. Um, so, yeah. I mean, do you have any questions so far? 
Um, yes. Like the, the, the one thing. I think that's actually... I, I've never thought about the, uh, the thing where I go mid lane, right? And like kind of get control over the jungle again. Like... How do I how do I approach this? Like how do I get this into my my habits? Because I feel like like when when can I like see the situation? Okay, it, it's hard for me to explain, but I mean I understand what you mean. I will go to the point. Right. So I mean you just need to understand retaking in general as a concept because it's similar here. Here you guys killed them. Right? You kill yeah. them, and like, we spawn Herald and shit, right? So now enemy team comes from base with resources and everything. So now the enemy team needs to retake control, right? Yeah. They will always come now on the map, because they need to retake control. You are a fucking piss oom and you need to base. So when they come, you normally, you don't want to fight now. So they're going to go and retake and you need to back off. You didn't keep that in mind, so you were like, oh yeah, let's keep fighting. And now you realize, oh fuck, now I need to leave. But we already knew Diana was coming. Right? Yeah. If he thought about the concept of retaking, we knew she would come here to Raptors, because it's fucking illegal to keep going. Okay? Now watch the side lane thing. They killed you guys. Meaning that they should either base or keep punishing. Yeah, right. That depends camps. on yes. That depends on resources or whatever is available for them, right? So now you guys need to retake control, right? Because otherwise they will get away with everything. So you could ask yourself: Can Urgot control mid by himself here when they come with three people? No, he cannot, right? Yeah. At least instead, he cannot control. Okay. So what does that mean? If they get mid push here and they fog to top, can I farm top? No, I can't, obviously, yeah. You cannot. So your mindset is that if you go top, you get one wave. Urgot gets one wave. But if we can't farm top because of this concept, then you going top doesn't achieve anything. You see what I mean? Yeah. So you go mid, you take mid wave. Because you realize they are all healthy. They are all champions that can easily roam the map. Right? Camille, E and stuff like this. That you will gain more for the game if you go mid and push mid and fight with Urgot. And Renata. Right? And control your jungle. Because Wukong will mm. be here. Right? They just use ultis to fight. Right? Mm. If you guys lose this fight, it makes no sense. Agree? Watch. Agree. Camille ulted. Camille ulted. Diana Watch. ults too. Camille ults. So tell yourself this invoice when you're playing. Camille ult. Okay? Actually, I don't know if Diana ulted ult. prior. She ulted prior, actually. Yeah, she did. Yeah. Diana has no ult. She ulted here. Diana no ult. Camille no ult. Go mid. Push mid. Take your fucking camps. Fight them if they come. Because you have Kale R, Urgot R, Renata is coming. They have zero ultis. So you should win. Surely you should win, right? They will not contest jungle because you will win, right? So now they will just back off because they see you there. Now you can enter top. So you lose one wave in top, but you secure that nobody dies, nobody gets dove, nobody's weak side. You get your jungle camps, you get the vision, and maybe you get a jackpot where they fight you and you kill them. And the way you recognize it is not that difficult. You simply realize... Wukong has push in top, I want to catch top wave. Can I get top wave? No, I cannot, because they will push mid and fog. See? Yeah. You see that now? Makes sense. Yeah. So then you go mid, and you fight them doing it. And then there you go. If now the Dan has 200 HP and they need to base, then yeah, you run straight top. You know? I don't think Jana Wukong will dive you. You know what I mean? Yeah, they can. I think you're fine, 1v2. But I'm scared of Diana, Janna, and Wukong. Because then, like I said, no matter what happens now, you're fucked. If Wukong recognized and solo dove you, you're fucked because no ult and around half HP. Even at this point when you got the wave, you're still fucked because you're not going to get this wave, this one. Because now if you just leave, you can't enter, so you lose this turret anyways. Yeah. But now your team lost their jungle camps and mid wave push. So I would rather just have you lose this wave and get it in mid instead. 
and get your fucking jungle camps and get a team fight, three v three with ultis, and that way you could maybe snowball the game. You just mm. didn't recognize that this was a fight window. Yeah. Like yes, Kale is weaker than other champions. Completely agree. But you are not so fucking weak that you can't fight two ultis versus zero ultis three v three. Right? Yeah. So you need to recognize this is a window where I can lose one wave. It's not even losing, but I like it's Urgot losing the wave. Because if you go mid and take the wave, you get the wave, you got lost in top. So it's Urgot losing a wave. Urgot loses a wave for you to secure your camps and a winning team fight. And vision control and make sure nobody dies. That is hundred percent worth it. It'll take some practice to recognize, but if you just review your games trying to focus on this main thing. You will see more and more windows where this kind of happens. And you will get better at it. Because I think it's crazy illegal to run top here. You see this? Yeah. Like, I'm looking at the map right now, and I'm thinking they should always fucking dive here right now. Yeah, and, and I don't even know how I don't see this. I mean, it totally makes sense, but, you know, I think it's just when you play this game for so long and you, like, never realize these things and you, like, have all these bad habits. It's like hard to to tell by yourself, because I I yeah, I mean, you're just right. I uploaded uh, a video about this not so long ago as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did it again as AD carry, but it's the same concept, you know. Um, so, watch here. <laughs> so I'm playing Silver ADC here. And, basically, Twitch is pushing bot. Just like enemy Wukong. Okay? Yeah. This looks like a lot of minions, right? Yes. But look where I am. By the time I get here, we both agree there's so like, like two casters yeah, exactly. left. So if I go there and I take these two casters, and then I take the next wave, and then I have to run through the jungle all by myself. I have been alone for 60 plus seconds. I agree? Yes. So now my teammates are basing. They're going to recall. What stops enemy team from killing me while I'm doing that? Yeah, nothing. Nothing. But what do you do so here then? Like walk? I go mid and take the exact same amount of minions. Watch. Oh, uh, yeah. See? Yeah. This is the yeah. same wave that spot. So now, I go mid, and I avoid weak siding myself. And then I get to also help contest the map. See? Yeah. Right? Obviously, Graves shouldn't do this. But if he doesn't do this, then we get control, right? So, good, good. Anyways, I get mid push, and then I can cover Akshan. But if I go bot, Akshan would be here right now. Like, right like right now here, around this. And I'm completely alone in bot. I don't want to be, right? Yeah. Because this Graves doesn't have to run here to int, right? He could have now been here, running with his support, and then it's me getting fucked in bot right now. So, like, if you're Kale here, you can go mid, you can take this one mid wave, and then you can go side lane, right? Like, for example, you take this one mid wave, you retake control here, and now you go top. Could do that, right? Or if nobody's bot, you could retake control around mid, help your team here, and then you go bot. Same amount of minions, but no risk involved and you might even pick up some kills or assists right yeah because if you watch my puffing i also were considering going bot see that yeah but now here as i was in base and started walking i was like looking at it and i was thinking dude i will fucking get dove if i go bot you know I was like, they're just going to come from base and kill me. And even if they don't, I would be completely isolated and alone, and they could also fight my team here. So why am I risking all of that to get one wave that I could get in mid? Right? Yeah. So instead, I open the map through mid lane. Go mid, take the fucking wave, and now I can do anything. Like I said, you're playing top here. You can now just do this and run to Trinomir, right? Yeah. So... Same outcome, but no risk. Your team can't get punished because they have number advantage in mid. Enemy team can't make a play on you on side because 
there is no weak side because nobody is inside. Understand? Yes. Akshan can't get punished because we got mid push because of what I did, right? If Grace isn't here because they're trying to punish Akshan, we would as a team be running here right now, right? Yeah. So, no weak side. Weak side doesn't exist here. And you could do the same thing. Takes practice, obviously, because it's a new concept to learn, right? But just like freezing, just like all your other concepts that you are aware of, it's just another thing to learn. Yeah. I mean, I wasn't and really aware, will... actually, of, of that concept. And it will be very helpful because you are playing a champion that wants the game to be stable, yeah. right? And this can help make the game stable. Because you are not helping the game being stable now. You are griefing your entire team. Your top jungle is getting completely full cleared right now. And Urgot can't walk up. Renata can't walk up, so she's jobless. Let's say you stay topside now. Renata wants to enter top. How does she help you? She has to enter through the lane like this. Now, how does Jinx enter when she goes mid and takes this wave and Renata's entering like this? Zero wards here. If enemy just stays missing in fog, how the fuck do you want Jinx to rotate from here to here? Yeah, she can't. She cannot. So then you are stuck two people top versus potentially four. But if you retake mid, none of this would happen. No. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. That was Anything good. else? That was helpful. Um... Not really, no. I think that was my biggest question. Alright, yeah. then I'll stop the recording here and I'll upload it tomorrow and send it to you. Yeah. Um, And as per usual, if you ever have any questions, just message me, okay? I will. Thank you so much. That was actually uh, really, really helpful. And I hope I can, you know, use it in my games. <laughs> yeah, good luck, man. I believe in you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Kel Take gang care. out. Hey, Kel gang. Uh, you already know. <laughs> All right, guys. That was good. That was fucking good. That was a that was a really really good session. Wow. That was a really really good session.